Super Smash Brothers, a franchise that still garners a staggering viewership online, an impressive turnout at tournaments. With that alone, it might be pretty safe to assume they're pretty great games, huh? Wrong. I'm JT Circus, and I'm here to reveal the truth. At that moment, I was forced to make sweet love to him on stage. With none of the booze. One day, the world will realize that Mango is an alien sent to kill us all. From party game players to internet criminals and thugs, from the love of the game to flat out blackmail and extortion. Through the trials and tribulations, it seems that these games have survived out of the cost of such darkness that seeps so deep we forget the light. I'm JT Circus, and this is the one and only true Smash Document. It's wildly regarded that the competitor Smash Brothers community grew organically through grassroots tournaments in people's houses. It did. The best players in the world from the East Coast to the West Coast came together to find out who was the best. Or that's how it started at least. The more grassroots tournaments that people went to, the more the fanaticism for Melee grew to a feverish degree. By 2005, the search for the best player had been solidified with Ken, but propping Ken up to Smash stardom wasn't enough for the early Smash community. They wanted Ken to be their leader. In 2005, I remember liking Melee. So I decided to go to this tournament I learned about online. It was held in some rickety old house in South Jersey. I remember thinking, is this the right place? I walked in and the place was trashed. People there looked sickly. It looked like a collection of homeless people. So then I knew I was in the right place. I made my way to the living room, kicking away empty energy drinks and making sure not to step on any of the smashers sleeping on the floor. But that's when the smell. Take your time. It smelled like... It smelled like someone cooking cabbage in a pair of used gym shorts. I love cabbage. What was in the living room? I turned the corner and that's where I saw him. Surrounded by a circle of CRT TVs. It was Ken. People were lightly humming a chant while he was spinning around doing some kind of weird dance. I didn't realize it then, but I had walked into a cult meeting. Ken wanted Melee to be something more, something bigger. Forming a cult was a natural next step for him. In the coming years where YouTube, the internet, and social media pages like Facebook took over the world, Ken saw his path to world domination. I knew I shouldn't have kept going to the tournaments. But Ken, he made me feel seen. If there was anyone who attempted to stop going, he'd flame them and it'd go viral online. It got to the point that he had hundreds of people attending these tournaments. He'd always win. Then in his winner's speech, that's when things would get very strange. Strange how? He'd have us cheer his name. Then as we cheer, he'd pull out a sandwich. And what kind of sandwich was it? Ham, turkey, peanut butter and jail gel. We didn't know. But as we cheer, he'd take a bite. Then we so badly wanted to know what was in that sandwich. He'd take so long to eat it too. Every bite filled him with ecstasy. 
Sometimes you could see a little sauce dripping down his lip. Me and my friend swore it looked like honey mustard one time. And in those moments, the smell of the venue washed away. Our worries about our lives washed away. It was just us as a community worshiping Ken and craving that sandwich. Ken's following was the biggest it's ever been. Smash fans would inevitably join these tournaments and all the prize funds would go directly into Ken's pockets. But his ambition got the best of him. In 2008, he would join Survivor, the biggest reality competition show at the time. If he would have done well, he'd have more people cheering for him. He had so much to gain. And as he thought, everything changed, but not for the best. Back home, I am very shy. I'm like a little rat. I go, you know, in the, in the corner, and nobody knows that. Who was this guy? This wasn't who I loved, who I looked up to. Where is the man I love? Where, where is the sandwich? It all went downhill. Ken's followers began to play party games instead of going to tournaments. And in turn, Super Smash Bros. Melee's tournament numbers began to decline. Without an icon to latch onto, the Smash community was lost. It seemed like Melee and its scene would be something of the past. But that is when the GOAT was born. Want me to sit my nice juicy ass right here? Oh, f yeah. Well, let's get started. Are you sure no one's gonna be able to know who I am from this? Okay. <sighs> the five melee gods? They're all frauds. We've been lied to. After the fall of Ken, it was only a matter of time before the cult would find a new leader and everything would go back to the way it used to be. But I don't think anyone would have expected them to come. The five melee gods are monsters. And I don't mean that metaphorically. Mango is an alien. Armada is a vampire. PPMD is a werewolf. Mewtwo King is a warlock. And Hungrybox is Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Hungrybox is the rock. By mid-2009, it seemed like Melee was back. Tournament numbers were kicking back to once they once were, and with more entrants adding to the cash prize, something interesting happened. Five all-star combatants seemed to come out of nowhere all at once. They revitalized the scene by bringing more competition, and in turn brought in more viewers and more entrants than ever. Many thought it was just a happy coincidence, but behind the scenes there was a power struggle of metaphysical proportions. They all saw incredible benefits to being the Smash cult leader. One day, the world will realize that Mango is an alien sent to kill us all. That's always been his plan. Trust me. I know more than anyone. Mango is the one that terrifies me the most. His mission as cult leader is to become the definitive greatest of all time for seven years. It doesn't need to be in a row, but if Mango becomes the greatest, the GOAT, for seven years, it'll give him enough cosmic energy to melt the polar ice caps and drown the world. While he's on top as cult leader, people cheer. Mango, Mango, Mango. That's what they'll yell. But after the ice caps melt, they'll be all like, that's the sound drowning people make.
the Smash Community Cult Leader. A position with so much power that grants so many opportunities. Mango wanted to destroy the world. PP and D and Armada conspired together to make it perpetually night. Mewtwo King wanted to take down all the world leaders. And Hungrybox? Hungrybox is Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Luckily, none of these five gods have stayed cult leader for long enough to fulfill their plans. But some have gotten dangerously close. Some people might not be too familiar with PPND and Armada these days. Good. Armada was the one that was closest to get his plan going. PPND and Armada wanted to eliminate sunlight altogether, and they almost did. As his influence grew larger from all the top placings at tournaments, he started to get closer to some of the cult followers that worked in the government. It might surprise some people to realize that Barack Obama was a Smash player. He was. He was a Luigi man that went to tournaments under the tag 1-800-FAT-MOMS. Top 10 in Florida. So when Armada pitched to the world leaders to eliminate the sun, it was an easy sell. Smashers notoriously hate sunlight. If it wasn't for Mewtwo King casting that Warlock spell to manipulate the world leaders, we would have no sun right now. The world would just be different. Investigative reporters started to spot the corruption early. But all five gods had one common goal. All that who would oppose the Smash community as a whole must be eradicated. In their eyes, even knowing about the Smash cult was too close to the truth and it was an immediate death sentence. Reporters, detectives, vegetarians, they all had to go. I'm just so scared. When will the string of corruption stop? When can I feel like stepping out of my house won't endanger me? I thought eventually Smash Bros would die out because so many people wouldn't want to drop Melee. But now Smash Ultimate it just created a whole new set of problems. So many more problems. But he's gone. No way. Is that it? No, he's still yet. in it. Or is it gone? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I've never seen that kill. I have literally never seen that kill. MK Leo as cold blooded as they come. The boy could give a vampire brain freeze. Not done yet. He's just that good. By 2019, it was clear that there was a divide in the Smash scene. There was the Smash Melee community being led by the former cult leader Hungrybox. But completely distinct from the Melee community, the Smash Ultimate community was thriving. Its best player, MKLeo, Inspired by the success of Melee's cult, MKLeo saw his chance to garner his own following. And that, he did. Thank you for sitting down with us today. This is very brave of you. Thank you. Could you tell us about the first time you faced MKLeo in Smash Ultimate? Hmm. Well, he was ruthless. It was a massacre. Usually when I start getting destroyed, I adapt, but he was just kept hitting me and, and hitting me and hitting me. So much so that I started to feel it in real life. Huh. I started to feel his sword against my skin. It hurts so much. I see. Where on this doll did MK Leo hurt you the most? Just tell me where to stop. As many of you know, MKLeo craves for Mexico to take over the world. He wants every single person in the world to be Mexican. He wants you to eat, breathe, and sleep Mexico. 
MKLeo wants Mexico to be your savior, your solace, your love partner. Many of you know that. But what you may not know is that MKLeo has always had another plan in mind. To take out the Smash Melee cult and all of its players. MK Leo used his prize earnings and donations to convince Nintendo to eliminate all online Melee tournaments. The Melee community somehow found out it was the ultimate community's fault. Um, so they started their own attack. That's when the Melee gods, headed by Hungrybox, started lobbying to Nintendo to get all Smash games out of EVO. And so they did. By 2020, all Smash games were out of EVO. Really sad. Absolutely. Could you recall a time where you were personally attacked by the Melee community? Yeah. Um, there was this one time I was fighting Sonics on stage. Uh, best Sonic player in the world. Uh. I was playing well, but uh, the timer was running down and Sonics was going to stall for the timeout. Um, there's nothing I could do. I, I, I needed to go for the timeout win. And yeah, there was nothing I could do. At that moment, I was forced to make sweet love to him on stage. Slowly poking each other and running and poking and running. The crowd booed. It was so loud. Um, through it all, I, the only thing I could hear was Hungrybox's laugh. He was the one egging on everyone to boo. His laugh. His laugh! It's all I could hear over the boos. Mm-hmm. You seem troubled by Hungrybox. How is it that you're both on Team Liquid together? Oh, Hungrybox. Um, uh, yeah, we don't interact really. Uh, I've, I've, I've talked to him like once ever in passing. Hmm. Well, could you explain this? Uh, th that was the one time in passing I was talking about. That was it. How about this? It was my birthday. He was, uh, he was just being nice. DeBuzz, how do you believe the Melee community found out that the Ultimate community was to blame for Nintendo taking down the online Melee tournaments? DeBuzz, get back here right now, DeBuzz! You can't, you can't run from me! this morning.